no disrespecting Makala and no disrespecting each other in the chat. And if you're watching this video after it's been uploaded, after the live ends, remember, share your opinions in the comment section, but share it in a respectful way. All right? Thank you. That will be most appreciated. And before me even introduce the caller, I want to notice. I want to notice. Oh, Melvelina, they are so a rock out our unstoppable merch. So I want to big up Melvelina right away. You see her? Melvelina rock our unstoppable merch, which says, please don't call my phone. Unstoppable is on. So I want to big up Melvelina right away. All right? And I know that alone Melvelina get. Melvelina get, you know, our, our, our hoodie. And other stuff too. So Melvelina, big up yourself. All right. Carla, good night. How are you? Good night. I'm doing well. Thank hope you for you thank, thank hope everybody is doing well. I'm doing well, and I'm sure the viewers are doing well, and they're going to be doing even better when them listen to you tonight. <laughs> somebody say, somebody say we that a story has sound spooky. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do, Carl, I'm going to give you the phone lines and I'm going to allow you to share what you have to share, okay? And where I feel the need to ask questions, I'll jump in and ask a few questions, all right? All right, then. Go um, right ahead. Signal is not too good, but, you know. All right, go right just... ahead. Hopefully, hopefully it works out strong enough for it tonight. All right, then. So, um, so good night, everyone. Um, my story um, started about, um, I've been married to my husband about, uh, say, eight years now, so... What's up, what happened was um, we, both of us would go to church, right? So, um, but with his job, when I met him, him, they have like a living job. So he couldn't always go to church, but me always go to church, right? And um, what happened was how I meet, how I met him. Um, my story in terms of like when I was growing up, in terms of when I was growing up, Hello? You still here? Yeah, can go me? ahead. Go ahead. We can hear Hello? you. Just listen, just keep talking right. until yeah. I interject. Okay, great. All right. So when I was growing up, right, I had like a rule and it had nothing to do with church because I, I started going to church seriously like later on. So it, this had nothing to do with church. This had to do with like um, um, growing up as an orphan, not really, not growing with my parents. One of them died. And um, so I had like observe certain things that was going on in my family and I said you know what I'm not going to be caught up in this kind of thing but have to keep a baby father um you know use relationship them kind of something so basically what I did was I just said I'm not going to have sex before I get married right so when I meet my husband now that was why I chose him right he was two and a half years younger than me but um what I did was, when I was 16, I went to America, and I went there, came back to Jamaica, like six years after, came back, and then um, I didn't really have, I didn't have the money to go to university, but I got into some, some law schools up there, and I didn't have the money, because I didn't have family help, there was just me alone, and so what I did was, um, I, I got a job over there, a couple of years, working in a law firm. And I was just doing like not anything to do with like legal, but I would was doing more like sales um, attached to the company. So when I came back down to Jamaica, I teach myself now how to operate it like remotely. But when I come back, I didn't really have the money. So um, I meet my husband, but how I meet my husband now, I'm there, come back to Jamaica, moving with this Christian lady. She was not really dealing with me properly. So every night now I'm like praying. Every night I'm praying, and in the end, now me kind of get fed up because she know that I really don't have family or anything like that. So what she kind of do is like text her and be like annoy me, like accuse me of things. So we just keep on a prayer. And one morning we get up and I was praying, and I hear God said, you know, some people not believe what me I tell you what what my story is. Um, God said to me that you're going to get a proposal. Bearing in mind, so from me a teenager, now me say me not go do not before me get married, right? So now I am in my early 20s now, and it's been like, say, six, seven years, I decided I am not going to be good. No this, nothing like that. God, I got half a person. So 
that this time now when the lady did their makeup are nice. All right. And she Tala, hold on a moment. The viewers yeah. are telling you to just calm down a bit because it sounds like you're sorry. racing. So just calm down, oh, take sorry. a breath. All right. Yeah, take a breath, relax, right. and just um, right. you know, it sounds like you're yeah. racing. I know right. I know you right. might so be a little bit nervous. The lady but don't worry. Now, I was having issues. So I just decided that okay, I'm just gonna um basically I was trying to leave leave the place, right? But I didn't have any. So I was trying to leave there. But one morning, no, early in the morning, about 3 o'clock, I was praying. When I'm walking up and down praying, no, God spoke audibly to me. And he said, you're going to get a proposal, right? When he said you're going to get a proposal, I was kind of confused because I wasn't sure if it's marriage proposal or uh, I didn't know if it was marriage proposal or if it's a business proposal. Because bear in mind, I wanted to, like, go off on my own. So I wasn't sure what, you know, what that meant. So that was on a Wednesday night. So during the same, same week, right, Saturday now, Saturday morning, the lady started to make up her nice, something about light bill and all of that. And me, I said to her, I say, I'm not even using the light. You know, if your child using the light, I'm just using one little laptop. So me take my, me take my laptop now and gone out on the road. When me go on the road now with the laptop, I go charge it somewhere. I look for somewhere for charge it. Me here, I always say, Turn right. Then I look up, it's him. But me not look at him as no husband or nothing like that. So me look at him, I'm gonna ask him if we can charge it where he was working. And he was working early in the morning. So him say yeah. And then him come over to me, start talking to me, asking me questions like what am I doing? Some explain to him somebody wanted some stuff from learn from the US and my computer and some I try charge the, the, the laptop. So him say, All right. So literally, I tell you, I kid you not, seven days from the time me and me, that guy, we were engaged to be married. Seven days. That was like very fast. And we got married, right? Now we got married. Both of us are like, it's like first relationship. He had girlfriends before, but there weren't relationships, right? I would say encounters with two or three people. So he's was kind of like similar to mine whereas he wasn't a girl if he was not going around with no people for girls and i was not going around with no guy right so we decided we're gonna get married so we'll get married um some people like that he was around him was saying i'm a gold digger because every friday me show up for him salary and so forth so you know money kind of find it a bit funny at the time them send me a gold digger. So anyway, bear in mind now the two of us get married, but we have no money. He's right. here for every oh, single thing. Uh, uh, we, 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 we call Because all, all of the viewers are saying we had a seven days, are you mean seven years? Seven days after you meet him? I don't hear you. The viewers are saying you say seven days after you meet Hello? him or seven years after meeting him. Which one? No, seven days after meeting him, we got married. Um, so, so sorry, seven days, and we've been married for like eight years now. So you met so seven him. Seven days. So you met him, and after seven days, you got engaged. Seven days, we got engaged. Yeah, after seven. And how soon you got married after the engagement? Unstoppable. Yeah, when he's going in and out, like how soon I'm you get? How question. soon you got married after the engagement? Okay, after that, it was a few months. A few months. All right. Because we had the plan. Right. Yeah, right. But and, we got engaged after and, seven days. And the viewers are saying, you, you, still, you still sound as if you're racing. So you need to calm down a little bit Sorry. more. I, I think that's, or, or is that just the way you speak? Which one is it? Well, I'm going, maybe my brain is moving fast. Okay. Yeah, they say, they say you sound speak. as if you're Nowhere. rushing everything. So all right, let's calm right. it so down, okay? So basically, yeah. So tell me if I'm doing all right. So basically, after that, we got married, right? But when we got married, he paid for everything because based, bear, bear in mind, I did not have any income, right? And I had to move out of where I was staying at, right? And people on his side, remember where he worked, you know, older women, they advised him like, I kiss me. And kind of like, we had like a big trouble with the relationship because they were like against it because they were like, don't buy no puss in a bag. And <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was a bit, it was a very difficult time. And we had to be fighting 
different battles because some people were they were against it. So he when we got married, he paid for everything, pay for the pasta, he pay for the whole entire wedding, he pay for transport, he pay for every single thing. Everything that that was that needed to be bought, he paid for it and he only had like a small tiny like minimum wage salary but he can save up some stuff with money from a couple of years where he was working. He paid for everything. Right? So after that I asked him to contribute some money. It's a small amount of money to help me to launch my thing online. And he, he, he did that. And then I said to him, like, whenever I get money, I asked him what kind of car he likes. So he told me. And I said, if I get any money from this, I'm going to buy you, like, your first car. And he was, like, a bit hesitant because he didn't think that I was going to make that money because we were, like, broke. So I prayed, like, for 30 days on that same thing that I wanted, like, this money for this car. So in 30 days, that's the day after, from the day that we got married to the 30 days, um, what happened was um, we got the money. As soon as I got the money for the car, I gave him all the money and told him that he could buy the car that he wanted. So he bought the car. Then a couple months after that, um, we were around our, his neighborhood, and somebody was like, oh, they have land for sale. So I'm like, why don't we just buy land? So we still didn't have the money, but we went by faith. And, you know, we we'll asked the people, I'm like, we're like, can you, can we pay for the land in installments? So they were like, yeah. So we said, okay, this, and we get one contract from the internet. And then every time we pay a certain amount of money, we give them a certain amount of money. So if we get 100000 we give them. If we get 50000 we give them. And we'll continue to do that till we get land. All right, so when you say, when you say, all right, the color connection really horrible. Oh, Diga, because right. that's what they told him. All right, you can hear me because you, you got reconnected Sorry. a while ago. You can hear me? I can hear, can hear you. I can hear, yeah, man, I can hear you. All right, you. so. I can when hear you. you. Say, when you say we paid for the landing installments, you're talking about you and your husband, right? Yeah, I paid for it because remember the, the online thing that I have, right? So mm -hmm. me pay for all of it. But I put. Both of our names on everything. Okay, right? so so because so let's 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 backtrack a little bit. You um mm -hmm. you met your husband, you got married, mm -hmm. you you asked him to finance a business idea that you have. Right? Yeah. He did. And mm -hmm. the business take off. Yeah. Within you say within thirty days it the was business. Him and take somebody off. else that helped me out. Somebody else was me. And you say within thirty days the business take off. Hello? The color Hello? connection is really poor. You can hear me? Yeah, man, I can hear you now. Right, so I'm yeah. asking you. You said we after after she invested, after your husband invested in this business idea you have, within 30 days the business take off, you said? Yeah, yeah, because I made the sale and I bought the car that he wanted. So you just, because you're promising for buying my car, you just buy him that car because that's the kind of wife you is. And you make him, you make him yeah, a promise. Yeah, I'm just buying what he wanted. It was on his birthday. I'm just buy, give him the money. I said, buy a thing where you say you want to buy. All right. All right. Sounds good enough. Continue. Go right ahead. Yeah, then, as I said, a couple months after, we heard that land was for sale. And we didn't have all of the money. But my asked the people if we can pay installments. And so we put down. And then both of us name go on that land. So we're, like, building up. So I said that now. Him, him get fired from the other place that him said because he married me, he can't stay at the place, right? So because he married me, them say him can't stay at the place. And that time, them never see the progress. So them, them say him can't stay, so them fire him. But during that time now, he might look for work, but he didn't find it. So it come to two years, right? Um, he didn't find the, the job. So I said, all right then, me I go just take care of the expenses until he figure out exactly what he want to do. If he might go retrain, uh, what he might go do? Because the job where he's training, you know, he never get a job. Um, in the professional he's training, he wasn't getting no job after high school. So let's just say, all right then, what you can do is retrain in something that's more like a career and not like a job. But a career, right? So right. that is in demand. So Carla, something is something is, is, is confusing me a bit. You said because he got yeah. married, he got fired. 
Yeah, because the lead is a living job, and she didn't want me there, so she fired him. You understand? Oh, okay, okay. But you understand? So, so didn't he? You understand what I said? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. But what I'm trying oh? to ask you is, didn't he explain? Hello? Carla, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, man. Right. What I'm trying to find out from you. So because you got married, the lady fired him. So didn't he try to explain to the lady that, hey, my wife is not going to be moving in with me here? Yeah, man. Everything. But she she didn't. She was like, a, she had like ownership over him. Like she wanted him to follow every. She even confronted me and told me that whatever she said goes. And she didn't want the marriage and she explained everything. So I told him, told her that, um, I said to her the last time I checked, I said the last time I checked, his mother is still alive. So I don't know why you're giving yourself that kind of authority, right? You're, you're, you're proclaiming it for yourself, but nobody's giving you that authority. So and that's what I told her. She never really liked me when I... So I'm like, you know, we're grown people. We're not teenagers. So if you want to get married, that's up to us, right? Okay. So she just fired him after that. Okay. Yeah, it's like a family, family like a all the family friend, like somebody that them sixties will give him a job, and like she feels she have ownership over what he does. Understand? All right, pick like up that. from where you left off. I get, I got the answer. Go right ahead. All right. So basically, um, after that, we bought the land and everything, and um, he, he, I said to him that in town, take a couple years or a couple months, and figure out what kind of career he wants to go into. So. Get your career sorted out and make sure it's there's something like, as I said, not a job. Don't find a job. You find a career. That's what me think, right? That's my advice to him. Find a career where always in a demand, you know, whether a nurse or a doctor or whatever, just find something where no matter what, it's always going to be in demand. So him say, all right then. So figure it out. Call one of the school them, college them. Figure it out if they going to go to college. So he started going to college. Um, when he started going to college, the whole thing just became so stressful because then we had to, like, we had such high expenses because our rent was, like, over 35000 including, like, our internet was over 35000 Then all of the expense every year, even for travel, go school, it was me. Any car expense, it was me. Every single expense you can think of food anything it was me because right in Mongo college and the bill was the the the, um, the rent was so high at the time right because we went house a house to rent at the time we were trying to move out we couldn't find a place it's like each month we try to move we end up here so it's like you know it's like <laughs> i don't know sometimes we feel like some kind of like thing was trying to keep us in that house so that we would but in, in at the end after like say several months, he had to sell his car, right? So he sold the car, right? Had the car for three years, had the car for three years, and then he had to sell the car, right? So when he sold the car, he thought for school, but school was almost, almost like kind of coming to a close. And then when he come to a close now, um. It's like him supposed to send out the resume of them now to get jobs. So me now get on that now, because me on the computers, I'm um, do him resume, ask him where he wants to go on it, show him a resume, him put some stuff on it, and send it out, right? When we send out that, him, him get a call for a job, and but the job was not paying him it was like minimum wage because like them I do some trial thing and them them not them do some long probation so it was still stress on me because all he could afford was like just to him travel. Right? So this was like stress. So what happened now? I fall into I fall into like a deep depression, right? Fall into a hole, can't come out of it. No me don't wanna leave the hole because I'm getting like so stressed. Right, and it's like no matter what nobody say, I I could not come out of that thing. Like me in my room, my house start sleeping in a different room. Him start complaining, and I say, why are you sleeping in a different room? This is not right. 
we're married, uh, you're doing your work in one room, and then you're sleeping in that room, and then you start complaining, and he's talking about sex, right? So I'm just like, you are broke, right? We don't have money, right? You're going to school, and I don't want you to come get me pregnant right now. Yeah, you understand? Because, and those were like horrible words to actually say, right? Considering that how close we were, like, we were, uh, we're a couple, like, everywhere he goes, I'm there. If he gets his time off, I come together all the time. Like, you know, we don't even have, like, friends with us. So, like, we go out with friends. Like, it's that those people are non-existent. It's just me and him, like, all the time. You know, like, every single time. So, that I've realized, I realized that this finance thing was kind of getting in our way. And it's like, I fall into a hole and I do not know how to get out. And that time now, I stopped going to church because of the whole depression thing. I just stopped going to church and I knew that that was the wrong thing, but it's like I couldn't stop what was happening, right? And then during that time now, we start get some dreams, right? And the dreams then that I get was like recurrent dreams that kept saying to me, like, you're going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to cry. Like every night, I get PC dreams. You know, you're going to cry, right? When he said this to me, this was October. No, sorry. This was, he told me this in September. When he cornered me in the, um, in the hallway, in the next, near to the, um, the laundry room, he said, um, like, what, what do you want me to do? So he said this. And, okay, you, I don't care. And he said this to me in September, right? He said this to me September 27th. Right, this is when he said it. So I'm just like, yeah, the date, so you can get the time. He said it to me like, um, the middle of September, 2017. That's when he said it to me. So me keep on, I get these weird dreams, and I'm getting these weird dreams, and it keep happening over and over again. And it's like, come, come past October now, 2017, and then go, go straight past now. I'm near like November, and when I'm November. I I am getting this. I'm walking around in the kitchen, and I'm getting this thing like God saying, like You're gonna cry. You're gonna cry. So it's, um, he started getting agitated. Uh, sometimes when he can come home, he's he's fine. But then for a couple of days, I noticed that he's getting really agitated. So I'm like wondering. I'm on the phone talking to somebody overseas, and I'm saying his behavior is so strange. He's stressed out. And he was complaining, he was saying something about money. And he kept saying something about money. And I'm like, now money, like, you don't even complain about me spending, like, like if I spend something, I would tell him. If I spend $500, I'm telling him, right? And if he spends anything, he's telling me because I keep track. And so he was acting weird. So I'm like, all right, this is weird. And I told the lady and she was just like, oh, don't worry. He, you know, he'll, he'll snap out of it. So I'm like, all right. then. And then he got so, so weird. That I said, you know what, I'm going to fast and pray for him. So I did a seven days, seven nights fasting and praying. And I'm like, I need to like figure like what this thing is. So I'm going to call him name to God. I'm just praying for him all the time. All right, let me ask you. And then at the seven, you. Let me at the ask seven you days. Can you hear me? Seventh day, um, this is what happened. Hello, can you hear me? We were, Yeah. Let me ask yeah. you this. So you said you deprived your husband of sex because you were yeah, you was I in did. depression. Yeah, I was. And how long did because you deprive of the your husband of like, for? Every single thing. How long it, did it like it became too much for me? If you can remember, how long did you deprive him of sex for? Hello? Yeah? How long? If you can remember, how long did you deprive him for? It was it was going on for a long time, like um, nine months. It was like long. Yeah, they put the really man long. nine months. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. And he kept saying his penis is troubling him. <laughs> He's giving him problems. No, you know you're wrong for that, right? <laughs> yeah. You know you're wrong for that, right? Uh <laughs> no, no, no. On a yeah. serious level, that you're wrong for that. In every sense of the word, you're wrong for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take full responsibility. Sometimes, you see, because like it's my first relationship, so sometimes you have to put yourself in the mind frame of a man and say that, you know, men 
Christ, we are from Venus, that kind of thing where you can't always, you're not, you're not supposed to think about life the way how women think about life, project that kind of um, thoughts towards men because they don't think, they don't think the way we think. Now, let me ask you another question. Now, let me ask you another question. Honestly speaking, Mm -hmm. during this nine months, did you honestly believe your husband was being faithful to you during these nine months? Yeah, he was because um, he was because he's not the type of person that um, that even before me, he was not the type of person to go around with different people. He wasn't that type of person. That's why he came to me. I got frustrated and said to me straight, "What do you know? It's getting really bad now. What do you want?" To do? And bearing in mind, I told you that. We were inside the house together. Like almost all the time we have each other's phone passwords. I'm on his phone all the time. You know, him not behave strange when I'm on his phone, nothing. And we are together. We are together. If him go down the road, him go down the road for like five minutes, he's back. You understand? He's not out with no guy friends. He's not staying out late at night. It's nothing like that. You understand? He is always around me. Because that's how we are. We're like weird. You understand? Like, both of us, we don't really have no best friends or anything like that. I have some church friends, but I'm, I'm not even, like, around them. You understand? So, even they, they're always saying to me, like, why aren't you out here with us? Like, oh, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, thanks. So, we're always around each other. So, I wouldn't know when he had time to do that. You understand? Okay. It would be, like, if him get him time off, he, we're together at the same or we'll say, oh, let's go to the beach or let's go somewhere. We're together. So, when, when would he have that time? If I'm in one room, he's in the next room. Okay. Yeah, I understand. All right. All so right. that's so, what we, all right. we are weird people. No, <laughs> we weird. So. No, the, the entire chat, the entire chat is saying you're wrong for that, but we're going to Yeah, I get, know. We're going know. to get back to the rest of the story in just a minute. Take a little water break. Cause you sound like you need some yeah, water. I'm, I know. I all have... right. Yeah, take a little water break while I do the shout outs for a couple of seconds and then I'll come right back to you. Hello? So just, yeah, can you hear me? Why is this lying? You could hear me? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, man, I can hear you now. Yeah, I'm saying take a little yeah. water break. We are now at 30 minutes in the show. I'm going to give the shout outs for a couple of seconds and then come right back to you, all right? No problem. So just take a little water break. All right, so viewers, the, 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 the saga continues. You know, she have a lot more that she's going to be sharing and we just have to just wait and listen. So in the meantime, let's take a little sh- couple seconds and leave the shout outs tonight. All right. So Miss Chrissy Unique, Unstoppable is in the building. People who know welcome the newest member to the Unstoppable Army. All right. She just jumped on the other day while we was live. Miss Chrissy Unique, Unstoppable. All right. That's another Chrissy Jai in the family. All right. Now, we also want to say big up to Annette Thompson for your Super Chat contribution tonight. Also, Lisa Unstoppable, bless up. Thank you so much. Sophia James, thank you for your Super Chat contribution. Michi Boo, thank you as well. And also, Moodman, thank you so much for your Super Chat contribution. Also, I want to say thank you as well, Susie Unstoppable, for your Super Chat contribution. And over here on the PayPal and Zell crew, all right, me have to big up the people and the Zell crew over here as well. So me I go say big up to Joan, Joan Reed. Thank you so much for your contribution to the Unstoppable Show. Also, as usual, Sophia James, big up yourself every single time for your people contribution. And I want to say Grace Davis, much love to you as well. Okolo Olive, thank you so much for your Zell contribution as usual. All right, and also me have to say big up to Tash for your Zell contribution as well. It means a lot. And over there upon PayPal, Steph Unstoppable, big up yourself. Much love. All right, Desia, me see you in the building tonight. Yes, Desia, big up yourself. You're here. Queen Dania rocking out and big bad and bowl. You're there. All right, also, me I'm going to remind you one more time about Melvelina, right? Repping for the Unstoppable family. She are your right here. So I rock. I please don't call my phone. Unstoppable is on merch. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. Jamaica YouTube. Definitely we have to big up the merch crew, man. So everybody who already made their purchase for the merch, big up on yourself. And once you get them, once it has been delivered, please do like Melvelina and send me your photo rocking your merch. All right. 
Melvilina get all up a big up on Facebook, Instagram, on the community tab, everywhere. Melvilina just getting big up everywhere because people are saying, yo, Mel, you look good in your merch. All right. So, Carla, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with, right. I'm with you guys, yeah. Did you take your water break? No, because I'm away from water, so I'm, I'm good, though. <laughs> I can't get to the water. Okay. Come in when the internet go down. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's pick up from where we left off. So we are now... Really we're so now a half an hour in the show. <laughs> we are now a bit half an hour over in the show, right? So let's pick up from where you left off. Let's get to it. What, 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 what else you have to share? Let's go. Hello? Oh, boy. Um, we, your internet, your internet bad, but we still can't hear you. Pick up from where you yeah, left man. off. Um, right, so where was I? So I'm at the point where um, uh, he's acting strange, right? So what I did was, as I said before, this is from September. He spoke to me. And so like October, from November, he started acting weird. And so I said, I'm going to just pray because I didn't really understand what it was. And then him start mentioning some things about money, like him say like, um, you know, why I can't get access to this money or whatever. And I'm like, listen, we have to save it because we have something to do. And so we can't take out no chunks of money out of this because, you know, may I explain it to, the, to him, the financial. And I message him, say, it's weird your behavior because you normally agree, normally have an agreement with these things. So I understand where the argument's coming from. And you don't even normally behave like this. You normally like calm and stuff like that. So anyway, him start behaving a certain kind of way. And then what I did was, as I said before, we just got on a prayer. And then one day, I walk into the kitchen. And then, as I said, I feel something. Still like, you know, saying like something coming towards you, you're going to cry. Like some dest destruction, disaster. Something. So um, I pointed at him in the living room. I pointed in his face when he was watching TV, and I said to him, "Cause I looked at myself, right? Can you hear me?" Yeah, go ahead. We're hearing you. Yeah, I looked at myself, and I thought to myself, "I'm like, I'm in this house. I'm not doing anything wrong, right?" So I look. I, <laughs> I was in the kitchen. I'm like, "It must be you, because I'm not doing nothing wrong." So we must say, it must, "You're not doing some nonsense because this not add up." Right, I, I know for a fact it's not me. If, if something is happening, it's not me. And so, my parents said to him, Mama said to him, so anything that you're doing, right, the devil is going to bring you to open disgrace. That's what I said to him. And I pointed at him and I noticed that he just looked up at me. And then he looked a bit weird and then he just carried on questioning TV. So I'm like, okay, so leave it like that. And then come to the Point where we need to move out of the house now because I'm like the rent is too high we need to move out but something happened to my phone right and I gave him uh, something happened to his phone sorry and and he was taking it to college all the time and he was and so it, sometimes it's like I don't have a phone so that day you know he was going off to um to work and he um uh, he was taking his phone. So I said to him, since you're always going to be like, we, um, since you're always going to be like at work where they don't know you turn on your phone, just give me the phone today because I need to come around some places to find information because I need to sort out the place as soon as possible because we need to leave and our rent is coming up and I want to move before our rent is due. So at first he was like, no, he's not giving me a phone. And I'm like, this is another red flag. Not giving me phone. That's weird. We're not going to share a phone. We're always on the phone. Like, we're not like, it's weird. Not all of a sudden, within the last two weeks, like, within the last, not even two weeks, but that was just weird how him know I'm going to get the phone now and how um, me and him together. And me read all of him text message and him read all of mine and all of these things. So, anyway, he, I, I took the phone from him and I, I actually just, like, there was this turn thing that came in me. I'm like, I need the phone. Right, I've got to call these landlords, and I need to arrange house viewing. I need the phone. Like I really need the phone. Bear in mind when me I said this, he said that express to him say need the phone. So it's like it's not an if or but like I can't go to here with the phone. So me take the phone from him. He agreed. He gave. The phone. He went to work. So I'm at 
if I'm working online, minding my own business, then me um me see this number calling the phone. Right? So when we see the number call the phone, I saw like I looked at it and saw two missed calls and so I'm like looking at it, but I thought I went on WhatsApp to look at the person's picture and I thought it was somebody from his college. Right? Because he was going to college with guys and girls and I knew there was girls in his phone. I saw text messages that they sent each other. I saw text messages that the, the guy sent him. So I knew I was familiar with all the girls, what their names were. Um, sometimes they would call, I would speak to them. I passed the phone to him because he was in groups and doing group assignments. So I, he had to talk to those people. I had no problems with that. So this particular picture and this girl, I've never seen her before except that I saw her picture come up on WhatsApp a couple weeks before. And when I saw the picture come up on the WhatsApp, I saw her face. And when I saw her face, it's like something inside of me was telling me, like, my noise got in her. He was telling me, like, say hello. You know, don't say who are you or whatever. Just say hello. Say something to this girl. Say hello. Because whatever, it's like, I felt like the reason why I was being told that is like, because whatever she was going to send back to me, I would have known that this is not an appropriate relationship. So something was just saying, Say hi, because she's going to think it's him, right? So she's going to respond back, maybe, hey, babe, or something. But anyway, I didn't listen to that voice, which I should have. I didn't. So what happened now? Come fast forward, because this is when I saw her, her picture. I saw her picture in October. Fast forward now, this is November, um, December, uh, December, like, uh, 15, 16. So this December 15, 16, and this is 2017. So I'm seeing her picture come up. I, I said to myself, I look at the phone number and I see that the phone number is blocked. So what I did was I, um, I unblocked her and then I, said, I sent her a text message. I said, how can I help you? So I, I typed in hmm and question mark. How can I help you? Um, hmm, question mark, right? So she texted and said, you are being sarcastic. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm being sarcastic. And she said, they say my pressure is high. My blood pressure is high. And I'm like, okay. And then she says, she calls my husband's name. And she types back, this baby is not going to wait until you get your head around it. You are stressing me out. More than this baby is stressing me out. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so unstoppable. What I did was my hand started shaking. My hand started shake. Right? My hand started shake. And I said to myself, all right then, let me calm down. Now right? at this now at this time, this is the man that you 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 thought wasn't cheating on you, right? Right. Okay. Go right. ahead. All right. I'm sure he wasn't. But anyway, so that's because he was with me all the time. But during these times when when whatever was happening, he wasn't with me. That's what I'm telling you. So let me let me let me tell you how I know it now. Let me tell you how I know it. So anyway, um I said, remember, bear in mind this girl thinks that this is him, right? So me, I gotta use this opportunity to get every single information from her, right? I'm not gonna get it from him. Because I don't want no lies or mis mistruths. So I'm going to get the information directly from her. So I started engaging with her in conversation. And I said to her, when is your baby due? And she said, June, July, 2018. I said, okay. I said, um, um, my wife has been seeing things because why I said my wife, I wanted her to know if I wanted to know if she knew he had a wife. Right? So I'm asking all these questions. And my wife says she's having dreams about babies and stuff like that. And that was true because I had a dream about a baby and he was standing beside a, a, a woman with a baby. But I thought that baby was mine because at that time we had said, okay, let's have a baby. But I, but remember, I was telling him, like, I didn't want to get pregnant. But now, within the last few months, I was saying, let's have a baby, right? So I saw this baby. I, I went to him and I said, um, I saw this dream with you and this baby. And the baby's a girl. And I started saying all of those things. And so at 
um, I need to get every kind of information from her first before he gets home. So I'm there talking to her. And when he said, baby, do you? And she told me. And then I, um, she, she, she was like, you show no care. You know, you're stressing me out. And I'm like, oh, of course I do care. Because I'm trying to keep her nice so that she would answer all my questions. And then I said, you know, well, who is the father? Be honest. And so she called my husband's name and she said, you are, I'm sure you are. So I said, okay. And then she said, um, um, she said, how does my pussy feel? And then I told her what she wanted to hear. And then she said, uh, um, you remember that? You remember that? And I said, so after that, um, I asked her, when did we meet again? When did we meet again? Because I'm thinking this is something like way up like a year. Because remember, he was going to college. So I'm thinking this is something like way up, way up, way up. Way up. And um, turns out they met in middle of October. Right? So bear in mind, I started seeing the dreams in September. Mm -hmm. um, they met the middle of October. And here I am, first week in December, finding this out. So that's around about six weeks. Right? Six weeks. So. That's what I was telling you. So that's why he came to me in September, right? And saying, like, what do you want me to do? And then when I said to him, like, me not, me not care. So he was just like, oh, okay. She said she don't care. Right? So him gone both in business, go do the same thing. So um, what I did was, bear in mind, I was like, down. Um, after I get all this information from this girl, I told her that I was at work and I was in the corridor and I had to go back in. But I'll talk to her another time said my greetings and that's it so what i did now i got dressed combed my hair remember now i'm not going nowhere i'm in the house got dressed combed my hair put in my earrings <laughs> got dressed like i was going to a fashion show and i sat in the house and i waited on him but while i waited on him i called his school because i'm trying to figure out who this girl is so i called his school called one of the teachers that i'm always talking to and I called her at the college and I said to her, does this, in the name of this person ring a bell? Is she one of your students? She said, nope, that person got here. So I'm like wondering, where this guy meet coming know him? Whereabouts? I'm like, this is bizarre. Like, where this person come from? And she looked like somebody that he would not associate with apart from just greeting her on the road and saying, hello. Like, she don't look like, <laughs> she don't look like a girl that he would, you understand? So I'm like, wow, what happened here? So anyway, um, when I saw the, the situation, I said, I'm going to call the teacher. So I called the teacher. I told the teacher what happened. My hands were shaking and I was like crying. I told the teacher what happened. And I said, this girl says she's pregnant and so forth. And the teacher was like, um, I told her I blame myself. And the teacher said, no, but he's married. So he shouldn't have done that. And so he's wrong as well. Don't blame yourself. He had a choice. And I said, but he told me when he was going to do it. He said that, do you want me to do it? And I, as the wife, I did this. You understand? Like, I caused this situation because he's not a cheater. He doesn't go around with other people. He's saying, well, I be with his wife, and that's it. But he said to me when I spoke to him about it, like, confronted, he was like, you let me down because I was relying on you. I don't want to go around with other people, and I'm relying on you, and then you, like, let me down. You know, and I understood what he was saying you know mm -hmm. and so um so what happened was i, I waited for, i told the teacher that i'm going to kill him when he gets home i don't know what i'm going to do so the ladies that like, beg me like please don't do anything to him i beg you like don't kill him don't do nothing the prisons in jamaica is not very good and you know i don't want nothing to happen to you guys like just please i'll send you a pastor's number you guys can get counseling like don't kill him please don't do nothing wrong to him and and then i'm like all right then i calm down and then i sat down and I waited for him to come home. And because I was already dressed, I said to him, please take a walk with me out of the house because I need to speak to you about something. And he had no idea what it was. And I said, I need to speak to you about something. It's really urgent. And um, we need to take a walk outside of the house because there are things inside of the house. And I just feel like something bad is going to happen right now. So let us just get out of this house. because Let's just take a walk on the road because at least when we're walking on the road, I won't do something, you won't do anything. You know, like, let's just walk 
on the road. He refused, he was like, no, I'm tired, I'm just come from work, I'm tired, I'm tired. And I'm like, no, let, let's just go outside, please. I'm begging you, he wouldn't allow me to take him outside. So I tried to calm down, I went at the room door and he stood in the room door, I stood in the room door and I asked him, I said, this girl, do you know this girl? He said, yes. And I said, she's saying that you are, uh, she's pregnant with your child. And he said, he don't believe us. And I said, so why didn't you come to me and tell me that this was what was happening? If you, she says something and you don't believe it, well, why having to come to me and said, you understand? So he said, how do I tell somebody that I love that I have gotten this person pregnant? You know, like, I don't even know this person very well and this girl is pregnant. So I'm like, all right. Fair enough, that's your answer. There's nothing I can do about it. I said, I'm going to call this girl right now. I'm going to put her on speakerphone. I'm going to introduce myself. And we're going to get to the bottom of this in front right. of you. So oh, I, oh, Carla, yeah. how, did, how did your husband meet this person? Right, this is where we're going to find out everything now. Because me, actually, all right. Okay, let me tell okay. you how, she, how we how, okay. Let me tell you how they meet. All right, bearing in mind... I'm depressed. We're 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 kind of separating now, you know, like like physically, like. So while he was going to work one day, which was in October, he sold his car. Remember, I told you, sold his car. Started walking like about a month. So he was at the bus stop. Here comes this girl. <laughs> she stood there. He was there smoking because. We might well backslide now, you know. Me stop go church, him start smoke. When he starts smoking, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm telling you specific when he smokes, he smoke, him keeps up eight months, he smoke. When he starts smoking, he makes some weird decision. This is not the first weird decision, but I'm not, not talking about cheating, but he did one next weird stuff. I'm like, I have to scratch my head because I can't. I'm like, everybody was scratching their heads. They were like, what the heck? Like, that's not even your character. But anyway, he was smoking. As a pet, and sitting down <laughs> at, at the um the bus stop and next to this cook shop place and this girl shows up. One of the questions that this girl shows up and asked him was, um, if we, if him have any if what what does he do and so him tell her him working and whatever and then she was she asked him like um if him have like yeah, obviously job if him have any children and he was like telling her no don't have any children so she's just like surveying him you know she's doing a little street survey so she comes she's doing her survey so exchange number put her number in his phone and so forth. that was in october because bearing in mind you know i text, i text her and ask her all the information before she do that i talk to her you understand so i ask all kind of information and i think she she found it weird because she was just saying like you know remember and i was just like oh sometimes i forget you know because so and so and she's just like that's why she said to me say how oh, her pretty he um feels right because i said i wasn't remembering stuff right mm -hmm. so she was just like oh you remember that though right mm -hmm. so that's why she, you understand i got all the information from she before i even picked up that phone and called her and spoke to her directly right mm -hmm. which she had no idea of i got all the information before he arrived home right so anyway i, I said let's do the phone call and she put her on speakerphone screenshot everything, all messages, everything, put it on um, recording, I'm recording calls, all this kind of stuff. I'm recording calls. But bear in mind, this is a stranger. I don't know her. I don't trust her. So I'm recording all calls. I'm screenshotting everything. I'm screenshotting messages. I'm saving them on my computer. I'm saving them in my cloud. I'm doing stuff, you understand? Because so, I don't know who this person is. So I asked him, what's her last name? Because I was going to look her up. He don't know her last name. I'm like, no, Bridget, when they take this thing to go, how on earth you having sex? I'm going to ask him, how much time them have sex? I'm going to ask, me they ask her, I'm going to ask him. So them numbers were similar. Like, listen, listen how they met up. October, middle of October, they did their first thing. End of October, right? Then twice in a, um, November, and one time the first week of December before me, like when we find out, around about that time, right? So, Five times alone. <laughs> five times, right? So, wait, this was Carla, what was good. Wait a minute. Did you yeah. just say five times alone? 
No, I mean, no, I say five to, but what may I say is that it could have been worse in terms of like meeting every night, every other night. Oh, okay. You get what I'm trying to say? So, like, okay. It could have been worse because remember, you know, even though really know the girl there, I'm not know her sex life. So imagine visiting her uh, every other night, meeting her every other night. That would have been, you understand, the, the, the risk that he was taking would have been, you understand, immense, more than just that. It's not, I mean, I don't mean that that's, that's okay. Don't get me wrong. That's not okay. okay. Right? But in my heart, I was just like thinking, you know, my head, I was just thinking, oh my God, these people, I'm in this house. These people are going out every night doing this. You know? And I'm like even thinking to myself, like, when did this happen? Because when I look, when I look at the time, I mean, I realized that the reason why this in public space, all this because you didn't want me to be like suspicious. So two times in October, two times in November, and once in the first week in, in and so I found out when about like the 16th of December, right? So that's that. So I called her, I were on the phone, and I said hi. And I explained to her that I was his wife and that he has told me that you're pregnant and so forth. And I explained to her, you know, asked, and she said, yes, um, it's true. And I said to her, like, you know, asked her, um, by, by that time as well, I must say, I did do some research on her before I even called her. So I already knew her last name, everything. So I talked to her and I said to her, are you, do you know my husband's last name? Do you know much information about him? Ask her if she's ever been out on a date with him. And she's like, they've never even been out on a date. Like, I've been, never even taken her out for a party. Never even taken her out for like a two piece chicken and chip meal. Like, and I said to her, like, you have two children, right? Two baby children already. This is your third um, um, child. And you are, um, you are telling me that this strange guy that you've just met. You, that's the, that's your baby's father, and she's like, eh. and I said to her like, when I was asking her like, when was the last time you had sex with like somebody else? And so she was telling me like over a month. No, she told me months ago, and then she told him a month ago. So I guess she didn't keep her lies straight. So she told him a month, and she told me a month, and then I also STD stuff because I told her that we're gonna have to get our sex because we don't know her. And he's dumb enough to go and do stuff. I said to him, why not use the condom? Well, here, 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 what happened now? He met her and met her, only know this girl for like, oh, or 45 minutes, like that, right? My girl is trying to come home with him. I need to come home. I'm knowing the guy. But I'm like, oh my God, what is Carla, 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 your, your connection is breaking up. We can hear you cracking in and out. But we are gonna need you to probably move a little bit so that it comes to a little bit clearer. All right. All right. Tell me when I'm clear. Tell me when I'm clear. Yes, on good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, on good. No, talk to you again. Right, right. So basically, I'm I'm trying to ask her questions because obviously, me I try to get to know who this girl is, right? And me have to make sure so me keep calm because I me not really want to embarrass him. Me no want to start at ghetto and act crazy. So. You know, me just I try to keep calm. So I talk to her and I ask her, you know, when was the last time so-and-so? Because me I say, you have to go investigate different, different um, scenarios because you, you just meet him. And then you're saying that um, him get to bring. She said she only had sex with him alone, him alone in that time period. I'm going to say to her, I say, that don't sound right because a person who's just had sex with just like, you're, you're claiming now to be like virginal. Like, you know, you only had sex with this person. I said to her, you, you only know the guy for 45 minutes. I come home with the guy, I try to come home with the guy, and she start trying to deny. I'm, I'm like, no, 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 listen, me, me, me hear your part, and I believe what he's saying here, right? And not everything, like, you're going to say, and then I'm going to believe, say, okay, right? So the guy said, you, you're meeting 45 minutes, you come home with him. When she tried to come out of the car, he told her that I, I am with somebody, I'm not available, so you can't come on my house, right? So what she did was she called him back the next time to meet him. When she met him now, here it is, it was very close to that time, so she met him, like another day, and she met him at a river, right? But, all right, he Carla, said, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So, yeah. she just forced her way in at the taxi for reach, for, for come at the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you what she did. She, she lived in our area where that was not even her taxi. You understand? That was not even her taxi. The, the, ta the place where she was going with my husband, that was not her taxi. Right, but what you I'm understand? trying to ask you is this. What I'm trying to ask mm -hmm. you is this. Your husband, they had a bus stop, you say, right? Right. This woman strike up a conversation with him. 
him mm-hmm. taxi or him bus or whatever it was that him decide for go pan, she come right. behind him and go pan it without saying, where you going? Can I come with you? Or, hey, I'm coming with no, you or no. nothing like that? Yeah, yeah, she didn't. She didn't. She, she came in it as if she, what she was doing is like, it was, she come in it as if he was on her way. You get what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, you're taking that. Oh, I'm going that way too. That kind of thing. Like, say, at the same taxi she had go on. That time she's trying to figure out where he lives and trying to get off with him, uh, off the same stuff. You understand? Uh, so okay. that's what she was doing, like pushing herself onto the person. Like, you understand? So, you know, we're, you know, like, oh, talk to him. Oh, he's a nice guy. So, so she won't go home. So he told her, because even the taxi guy did, um, like, made, made note. So he told, so basically she, oh, sorry. So basically she tried to, um, come out with him and he told her no like he told her like I'm not like I live with my woman like you know you can't come out right so that was her cue like I was like alright then you know you know he's with somebody he never told you it was available right you know him with somebody so I'm gonna understand why you understand so anyway she met him the next time now like the next day or something like that and guess what now she's at the the, the river right and he said Right? Him claims that him never knew that there was going to be sexual activity. Right? He was shocked because him never knew that. Someone said to him, so how do you mean say you don't know that there's going to be sexual activity? Also, I forgot to tell you the answer. When she was at the bus stop with him, she said to him, all you, if me I have sex with you, all two condom me, me with a youth. That's basically one of the things that made him um, think sexually because she said that she would have used two condom with him because he is a handsome guy. Right? So she was saying stuff like she thinks that him have enough woman all over the place, but if she have a sex with him, she'll make sure that she use two condoms. That was one of her so her selling points for herself, selling herself, you know. And so when she goes up to the river now, um, guess what he did now? He's on the on the side of the river, chilling, and when he turns around, this girl is absolutely naked. Naked as the day she was born, saying stuff like, Oh, I'm going for a swim. She's going for a swim, naked as it is. So I'm just like, Bridget, you go find yourself. What did you think she, you, you were going around the river to do? To go play a hopscotch? <laughs> no, seriously. What do you think that you did a girl around the river to do? Secluded river. What did you think was going to happen? Ah, uh, no, we're going to find out each other's last name. And me, I have to tell you the last name. And she, and me, I have to tell you, you understand? That's how bad this is. So I say, Bridget, do not come to me with these things, but I didn't know she was going to do that. I'm like, Reggie, are you going to put yourself in a Satan web, right? I do not know. All right, if anybody listening, I know about um, Proverbs chapter 7. You see, exactly all Proverbs chapter 7 set out the scenery. This is exactly what happened to this guy. It's exactly what happened. And me and him used to read Proverbs 7 till we week. Me and I know how him never see it. Me and I know how this man never see the trap. Me and I know when we read Bible, me and I know what he's buying there. Anyway, the girl turned, um, took off her clothes and said she's going for a little swim. And him no no, you know the trap, no. As remember him tell me saying penis again problem, you know. Every minute him about me tell me saying penis again problem. Right? So so that was just the thing, you know, him tell me say, I'm tell you from long time, some penis again problem, so I know what you expect me to do. So anyway, oh um <laughs> so anyway, um, them there the river, them do them little thing, but guess what? No, he may not trap now, he might try to come up, but he might, he might go down the road, go back and down. My girl said, Don't leave me down here, Mr. Yarecho. You see, you see the crash is way for yourself. Don't leave me down here. The devil himself, I talked to the girl, you know. My girl said, Don't leave me down here. I'm gonna talk to her about it to say, Why you didn't let the young man go get a condom? What the hell is wrong with you? If you say, I'm gonna talk to her about her situation with her, um, first baby father, second baby father, she tells me that. The incident with the first day before, she said, him trap her. So I said, you know about trapping me? Then the second one, she said, the second day before, that dead. So I said, no, sir, I appear across to follow that girl there. Anyway. Wait there, Carla, wait there, wait there, wait there, wait there. So, <laughs> the, you're telling me that mm-hmm. you are on the phone having a conversation with somebody yep. that your husband slept with, and you're saying, so why you never met the man go get a condom? Uh-huh. That, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm saying it unstoppable. Let me tell you why I'm ask her. Because number one, me I try not to be like, me really want to tell her about some something. You understand? But at the same time, me I think, 
God, 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 I have to be a proper like me, me not nah, think me can't me, 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 me battling. You understand me battling between telling her about her class and then being decent, like me a battle. It was a warfare to remain calm, right? So what I'm doing is trying to figure out who this girl is. I want to hear how much lies she got tell. I want to hear how honest she is. I just want to get to know who she is, right? And I want to hear her up and see up as well to realize what kind of demon I'm deal with. And I know every day a regular demon, right? So I tell him, I want him to hear and I want him to see. And say, listen, everybody is not going to be like me, like looking out for your best interest and trying to... No, that's not what you... If you go, if you go play a street game, you go hard or you go home. Okay. Like you go up on the road, play, you, you play a stupid game, you win stupid prizes. You understand? So you go out there and I do stuff. If you know, say I go out there with... You carry a condom, Bridget. You understand? But remember, remember, you know, Carla... Go on there for, for play. But Carla, remember, you know, you said that he had no mm. idea... That's what was going to happen. If they think they're going to play hopscotch, remember? Yeah, was so... yeah exactly. But the thing is that I said to him, said, in my head, I said to myself, why are you going there in a secluded area? You need to prepare yourself, right, just in case something happens. Because the girl comes to him with, with sex argument the first day she meet him, right? But so the man think a hopscotch is going to play, so he, 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 he wouldn't yeah, go worry well, about that. He never I'm, go worry about that kind of bad. Yeah, listen, listen. They had a wonderful time, right? So anyway, <laughs> them ruined there, go out with them, them things under the river. Then them change location and move it to the beach. <laughs> mm. They're being adventurous, right? So them will be adventurous. So them, them change location because I guess that that was um like a far area where she had to take taxi. She didn't want it in a taxi. So um so me talk to her on the phone. I'm asked to try to so, him take it because guess what? No, as well. I wanted to find out if they're apart from sexual, if there was an emotional connection as well. Because you know, like I does he like this girl? They they, they talk on the phone. I mean, I said, me me see my night time. The guy asleep. The guy not the pan no phone. I talk to no girl. Him not the pan. Like so, me say, me say, when me and him was dating, right? We were on phone like midnight, go right up to five o'clock. Him ready for go work. Like we were always on the phone, like always talking, going places, going out to dinner. So me kind of surprised. No, so me I said, wait. Oh, you breed somebody. And then, I just don't understand. It just was confusing. So me asked the girl, say, so no, me, me and the girl, no, what I decided to do now is keep my friends closer, my enemies closer. So I started talking to her as a friend for a little while. And I started saying, oh, you know that, you know, we'll just start this thing out. And she started saying she wanted money. She said she wanted money for a scan. And she wanted 7500 we also, this, she also, the reason why my husband, I found out the reason why he was behaving agitated was because she wanted $20,000 to go do an abortion. And so that's why you see him coming out of the house and I behave weird because any money where me touch me, tell him any money. Where, and if him got to take out 20000 now, how the heck he's going to explain what he did with that money, right? And then I said to her on the phone, I said to her, so my girl, you would rather commit abortion, have blood on your hands, than to allow this man to go get a condom. I do not understand your mindset. Your mindset weird, right? So you'd rather than you'd rather go through abortion. Um, um, abortion can kill him. So you'd rather go through that, right? Than for tell the young man for use a condom. And then I asked her about her contraception. Why you never tell the guy for buy for buy for buy? A, she said no. She said she didn't. She didn't have money to buy contraception. So I said to her, I said, so you think him, him would rather impregnate a stranger, right, where him not really know, than for you for telling him, say, you need some money for go get contraception? That's what I do. That's what I said to her, I said, so you're not going to ask him for the money for the morning after pill when you realize, uh, you understand? So um, my find out all sexual stuff, I ask him all kind of questions, and I um, say, you know, was there, you know, did you come inside the girl? No. And I talked to her. And I asked her, I said to her, can I ask you a question? And she was shocked. And she starts stutter on the phone. I said to her, I said, why did you ask my husband to come inside you? I said, after you know that he's a married man. And then she started like, oh, she was like panicking because she didn't know. Like she was just like, she didn't know that me and him would have gone so in depth into discussing what they actually did. She was shocked because I asked him every single thing. Right. And sit down and discuss it. And me asked her a question, but I know she, li she, know, I know she lies, lies a lot. Right, so when I went on her Facebook page now, I'm trying to figure out who this girl is. We go on her Facebook page. I know she knows me and her last name and everything. So I'm going on her Facebook page. We go and find out who her family members was. We find out. Um, me.
kind of say she have this cousin who live in her exact area. So I called the number because when I went on his Facebook page, I noticed that he's selling a car. So me go on, on it now and call him, acting like I'm calling about the car, and then go straight in and telling him about his cousin and what's going on. And he must say, I said she set up the youth, man. I said she set up the youth. And then something that she go on with. I said she set up the youth. Right? Start doing more research. They're saying that this girl have AIDS. Rumor girl and said this girl have AIDS. Mr. Lord, help us, God. So we have to go do a test now. And me never do a STD test in my entire life, apart from when <laughs> him go go meet that girl. For the first time, we have to do a STD test. I end up going to do the STD test. Me I brought down in the office, tell the, the, the doctor where him do, say him go meet mad man, and go do where him do. And the, the doctor know. <laughs> the doctor was on his side. <laughs> the doctor was there smiling, and was on his side, like he was say, <laughs> yes, my boy, or, I don't know what he was saying. But the doctor was there smiling. I was just like telling me like, oh, calm down. Don't talk to him so harshly. And I'm like, well, at least him could have got get a condom. Come on. If you, if you even find yourself in another situation, at least you know you have a condom. You can't just with a strange woman. You know, as I said, if people, if we're, not, if we're not need to read Proverbs 7, this is exactly what happened. This is a story play out, just like what Proverbs 7 said, right? And so, so me that day, I ask her a lot of questions. I talk, talk to our next cousin now. The next cousin live where she lives. And I said, all right, then. Give me all the information for all of the family members, as in our mother, brother, sister, whatever. Just give me all the information. And then they feel sorry for me. I immediately I cry and I tell them what happened. And say, this girl just come out of nowhere. I know she has said she's pregnant and she's asking for money. She's asking for abortion money. She's asking for this money. And I explained to the girl, you know, and so I said to her, lady, this is not um, a treasure hunt, right? I told her, like, you, you looking you know, like you're on a treasure hunt. There ain't no money right here what you're looking for. This guy is earning minimum wage. He's, all his money is going on his travel. Like you were fishing for some gold and it ain't over here. So you understand? It, if you ever know the situation, right? Why we even end up in another situation here is because of finances. Like you come in over here. I call her, I tell her, I say, I text her back and say, you see the man I go work. You see, so the man have a job and then you come dash yourself, right? Forget pregnant for money. I tell her, I say, you know, Sorry, you're out of luck. That treasure hunt here now go work. I'm with my color, um, hungry belly fool. And so forth. I start insulting her afterwards. And the reason why I started insulting her after, after days of talking to her and, and extracting information, what I did after that now is I prayed. And I was like, you know, it, I felt bad because it's like I'm praying. I'm in agony. I'm praying. And I feel like I'm not hearing God clearly. Like, God, what is this? Can you explain to me? What is, I mean, I kneel down and may I search, feel, reach out to God, like, please help me, like, what can I do about this situation? Like, tell me what's going on. And the one word that God gave me when I kneeled down after I was fasting, the one word he gave me was trap. That's the one word that God gave me, trap. And that's when me changed, like, green lizard, when I got up off my knees, I started dealing with, dealing with her fierce. I started saying to her, listen, girl, mm -mm. I, said, I said to her, you've got to, Start yourself out. If anything, if this baby is his, what we're going to do is we're going to go to through mediators. You drop your child off there. So we're going to go do DNA test. And the DNA test, you have to go pick it off. I'm going to pick it off. I'm telling her, tell her it's egg and sperm make baby. This time now, bear this in mind. I'm going to listen. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. My husband and this girl was never on the phone talking. Never on the phone having any conversation. Never even texting back and forth. This is how weird this situation is that me even say to her, I say, my girl, the guy is not calling you. I mean, before me find out this, you know, it's just a text me link up, right? It's not no on the phone for no 10 minutes, on the phone for 15 minutes, on the phone. Even one time when he was leaving to go home, she started arguing with him like, Why am I, who is she to even ask me that? I'm going to say, you gave her a platform and she's exercising her hours because you gave her a platform so you can't say who is she like you can't say that right so at the end of the day him that there now are going with female things she had to fear to me turn against her right i'm gonna start deal with her fiercely and i said to her um all of my husband bear in mind him not text her him not call her him not reach out to her nothing at all every text that she's getting is from me and sometimes she thinks it is him that's talking to her and it's always me when i'm gonna work everything it's always me that's texting this girl 
and she think it is him. And I talked to one of the cousins, and the cousin said, "Listen, we always saw this is this is a uh, this is this is a situation with lots of animosity. So what we we not forgot to do is we not forgot to work through a mediator. So him give me like a pastor number in you know, the local area where they um associated with like baptizing her and stuff like that. So we talked to the pastor, tell the pastor what was going on, and say we well, forgot to have a meeting or something because this is what she's saying. Now the cousin now start spy for me and start and send one girl and the girl asks her. The girl say, who is the father? She says, see one security guard. She said, one security guard. And then um, we talk to our brother. Our brother say, security guard. I'm like, all right, a security guard. Then we talk to the pastor. The pastor asks the uncle that is in the choir in the church and him say, security guard. I'm like, so security guard, security guard, security guard. My husband's over here, so. Uh, he's not a security guard, but she is tormenting us and calling me and she is doing all kind of something. Right, December 18th, no, December 30th, 30, 30th, 28th, 20, 2017, I get a text from her, come through to my husband's phone. The abortion was successful. Unstoppable, you know I'm not lying because I've sent you these text messages, right? Mm -hmm. the, the abortion was successful, right? So what we did was we left it. We did not respond to her. And then on New Year's Day, 2018, I called her. I said to her, thank you so much for the message that you have sent us. I hope that you can move on and be content with your life. You've done your abortion. I said, let's just move on, right? So let's just leave it at that, right? And so I said to her, have you done your abortion, right? And she was like, me please myself or not? I have to answer nobody, whatever, me please myself. I'm going to look at my husband and say, yes, to the, yes to the cross is where you're bringing that we had. No, seriously, yes, the type of person I deal with. Right? And I said to him, I'm dead asleep. Sometimes we, we, <laughs> we knock him in my bed. <laughs> we are going to put him the mad one up on the phone again. So, anyway, so, you know, the, um, the New Year's, me and I had this big argument with my mom's church. So, I was saying, it's the New Year's. Why are you not just relax? Don't make shit, don't make shit, don't make shit make you upset, man. It's a new year, you must just calm down and stuff like that. So I said to myself, say, no man, this is serious. I call the cousin, the cousin say, she broke, where she gonna get money from for do abortion? She not have not, she not do no abortion. Don't me, I'm gonna ask them to spy on her, see if our belly is still big. And they're like, yeah, our belly is big and it's not going nowhere. Wait, it's still wait, big. wait, wait. You say you ask our own cousin them for spy on her? Yeah, for spy on her, oh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, this do a father again. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So, I you, when you come off asking the woman who mm -hmm. and cousin them for spy upon her and bring information listen, to you, how? Listen, listen. Because they sympathize, they empathize with my situation. You understand? They said this girl has been doing these crazy things all her life. You understand? School time come, she disappeared, gone and money, had parents, I look for her, them can't find her, all kind of something. I'm here look at my husband and I said, my skin is crawling. Because seriously, we can't believe it. No, I said, no man, you're sleeping with the entire community, bro. <laughs> All right, no, so, just one, no. anyway, listen yeah, to Allah. The entire community, man. And that's one person. Mr. Tim said, I think one person you don't sleep with are the entire community. All right, listen. So, so yeah. we, we, we got 18 <laughs> minutes over time. So what more are you doing for me right now? Is, tell me. No, mm -hmm. no, man. No speed it up, they already mm -hmm. attack fast. What I want you to All do right. is I want you to tell me, are you and your husband still together right now? We are together and we are alert because the Bible said be sober and vigilant because the devil is walking around to and fro seeking whom to devour. And every time I is going out the road, I said, be mindful of Proverbs 7. Me say that to him all the time. Mm -hmm. If you my God, be said. Proverbs 7. Let me shout it out. Proverbs chapter 7. <laughs> okay, how long, so, ago, how long ago did that situation happen? It happened in 2017, as I told you, and she said she was going to have the baby in June, July of 2018, right? But it continued, right, because she wouldn't, like, let us see a picture of the baby or anything like that, right? And she also called, all right, listen to this now. In December when she called, in January, no, December she texted, she said, abortion completed. Me now call her in a January, New Year's. She now answer me. And I'm like, girl, why are you messing? Like, this is a marriage. This is not no bush side 
rendezvous like what you were doing, right? This is a marriage, right? So don't don't play with me. Like I'm don't play with you. You understand? Stop playing with me, right? That time she doesn't know that I have people spying on her, right? So anyway, and I don't just have her cousins. I have friends in the area who are telling me like, oh, I'm standing in Western Union right now. I'm looking at her, right? Um, and some people call me. They mean I'm uh, um, supermarket. Them I look right at her right now, right? So and sometimes them look at that one lady called me and she said, listen. We are Christians, I will mostly say people look bad, I will mostly say people people ugly, but my God, your husband be thirsty. <laughs> so, okay. So, so, it's one, so tell one me of those this. things. All right. So we're mm-hmm. gonna wrap it up right now. But what I want you to do is the final thing what I want you to do for me is tell me. Yeah. Why is it that you say that this woman was the devil sent to seduce to seduce your husband? All right. Let me tell you what happened now. After that, um, we found out everybody. She was telling, chat, chat, comment me for the, um, from the from the September, um, sorry, November, December, twenty seventeen, and it carry, carry on to the next year. And when the baby born, she doesn't want anybody to see or be, even before the baby. So me sent her one text message and said because this curse of living in board houses and trapping people's man. Um, I said to her, this thing is going to be passed on to all her girls where she have, right? Because she, I'm going to tell her that she needs to repent. That was the first um, uh, like heading, first word that I said in the text message, repent. And I said that to you so you know that I'm not lying. And then what happened now, she you now took my name to the police and said, I threatened to murder her. Kept my name to the police and said, me threatened to murder her, right? And bearing in mind, I have all the text messages everything and all the conversations recorded, right? And this girl said, me threatened to murder her and she's scared for her life. Run gun a police, a ball, and I behave whatever. And the police called me and said that, and accused me and said, I, and, and was like, the police called me angry. So me raised up my voice and get the police and said, listen, I will take out a lawsuit against this hoe because at the end of the day, she's been contacting us. She's been saying all kind of things to us. She's been, she's, I said to the police, like, listen, tell her that, Everything's recorded because she don't know. You understand? She has no clue. If me supposed to go court now, she's defaming my name. She's trying to, to scam us. When we found out, the baby was not his at all. When we saw the picture, I'm like, oh, my God. This girl has been on, in our house, in our board house. And I don't care about anybody being in our board house. But at the end of the day, right, you for just admit what is going on, right? I told her, I sent her a text message and said to her, I said, listen, the problem is you're in extreme poverty and you're going on the road and you're looking for everybody, anybody where we can help you out. I better you ask him to help you, right? Me always help people no matter what. I better you ask him to help you, right? And I better you just say, you know, me need a little help than for coming out of the personal life, right? And just uh, push up yourself. And the girl, she said, she, she all tell my husband about she love him and all these weird stuff. I mean, I said, my girl, the guy in a car, the guy in a text, the guy by a, by a, a Malta. How much encounters you have, you only got a malta, you never get a, a box food. How are you choosing this man to be your baby father as you push yourself on a man where him not even call you back, him not text you back, him block you, right? Me have to unblock you, right? So this is what I understand. So the girl call up my name, no police now call me up and I say, like, you know, I can get in serious trouble for that. I said to the police, I um, asked her, I said, can I ask you something? Do you have proof that I have done this? I said to her, can she show you her phone so you can see the last text message that she got? She, the, the police like, no, no, they never see it. So I said, before you call me, please look at her phone to see the threat where she said me threatened to murder her. Please, please, I'm asking you, check it because I expect better from you guys. So now, when I work in a, a prestigious office, I want you to check it before you call me if you accuse me of me, I got mur- me, I murder, me, I try to murder that girl here, right? Right? Yeah, do I want her... Do I want her six feet under? Yeah, at the time, yes, I did, right? But did I say that I was going to murder her? No, I, that never came out of my mouth and none of the recordings. So when me text her about nothing, I said, listen, you've been recording, you know, I have every single thing, you know, right? And I said to her, that's why you have an age rumor going on around about you because of the way how you live your life. And sometimes when I think that it is funny because when I have this tech people, man, culture, and sometimes that's why some of these girls end up missing because they are out on the road in, under every green tree doing God he knows what. And then when they're missing out, they're mother ball. They're on the ground, a ball on TV. And your, your daughter is out there terrorizing people. And they find it funny. 
my husband, I told my husband, I said, if you want to call her, you can call her. If you want to leave, you can leave. If, if this is a, this is a fairy tale and I'm interrupting this wonderful fairy tale, I need to go find your princess. I, I give you permission. You can go. And me tell her, so me tell him, so him can call you, know? But the fact that you're not going to call text, that's nothing to do with me. Do not get upset with me about it. Right? All right. And so, so the fact, like I said, yeah. we, have to, we have to wrap it up. But one last question, and just answer this short yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, this present moment right now, is mm -hmm. there a baby in the picture or not? Yes, there is a baby in the picture. And the sad thing about all of this, the security guard who got this baby, I mean, if I jacket him, get her what? But this guy has no idea about what was happening on this end. You understand? So, so, so while so, that terrible, we security guard never know about so she shall pass on the baby to somebody else. So you're saying never that know. the pregnancy that she was trying to give your husband was actually someone else's child? For the security guard, yes. Did you do and the DNA? You didn't need no DNA when you look at that child. You'd never need no DNA. The D Let me tell you something. She's a dark-skinned girl, right? And um, the, the security guard, him have, like, <laughs> him, me show you the baby, it's unstoppable. And I showed you her, right? And I showed you my husband, right? There is no way on God's green earth that that child belongs to my husband. My but I still no, think, in, I mean, I still think you should have done the DNA. At least no, your husband no, no, should have no, still was, done the DNA. No, guess what? No, because everybody, everybody in our family, they know the, some of them know the security guard, and they say that is that man's child. Because, all right, let me explain something to you. My husband is brown, and him, him have uh, her. She, she, in nothing, right? Because we know how DNA can work. All right, Kali, well. your, your call coming in, I know, the call dropping. But, all right, so we're going to have to end this right here because we are actually half an hour over. Um, yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Hello? Okay, you can hear me? Yeah, we're, hear you. we're Hello? actually a half an hour over, over time, so we're going to have to end it right here. But, um, so... Yeah. The final thing is, you and your husband is actually together and happy right now, and there is no issues because of this, right? No, it's no issues. But um, the only issue that I have is that you know it's it's been hard to forgive this person. I can't believe that some people are so wicked to come and push up yourself in something when you, you knew from day one that it wasn't the guy's baby. You know, because everybody else in our environment said it was the security guards, right? And it's like why. Why would you push up yourself like that and try to destroy a marriage? And she even uh, go to church and I said, she's going to get baptized and all these things. She's going to get baptized for the third time. You understand? And it's like me to myself, so you're never on a conviction in your heart, so you was doing something wrong. You know, during the time that she was pregnant, you know, she was going to church enough you know, to get baptized again, you know? So you basically, like, want, you basically want the feedback of the viewers to, to yeah. let you know whether or not you should forgive this woman? Is that what you want the viewers to advise you on? <laughs> Just so that the best way, like people where them would have used to forgive the person. Because trust me, it's like the person I live rent free in you know, my head because if we see situations that up on the news or something, I always say, you know, like, I'm not having no compassion for the women them anymore because of how we see how them push up themselves in a people's relationship. And I feel like she kind of made me bitter. You understand? Whereas we never used to pay attention to these things. It's like, no, if we see it, it just made me a bit bitter when we know we're not supposed to be like that. You understand? Someone, I mean, take a lot of someone said to ask you, did you forgive your husband? I, I feel like I forgave him, but it's like he come up every now and again. Like sometimes I'm laying down and I'm smack him in the back of my head because I think of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I know I so do you give your husband any... Problem? Do you give your husband any fault in this situation at all? Yeah, because I said to myself, if you're even, I told him, I said, why didn't you just um, end the relationship with me and just go off and do that with the person if you want to? Or why didn't you use a condom? I told I asked him all these things. And he said, I never said I wanted a divorce. I never said I wanted to end the marriage. That was not it. I just, him penis was giving him problems. That's him say. So he must say it's nothing to do with ending a marriage. All right. So that so was the issue. Because I'm over time, yeah. I won't be able to open the phone lines. But what I, what I will say to you is this. What I will say to you is this, Carla. Mm. I think you need to first forgive yourself first. Because I think some part of you blame yourself 
yeah, for allowing him to go out in the first place because yeah. because yeah. where you deprived yeah. him now don't get me wrong you know don't get me wrong yeah. i understand that depression can cause you to not be interested in sex at all yeah i do mm -hmm. understand that right and if you're depressed you're not going to be in the mood to have sex right yeah. however you need to first forgive yourself first and as far as the young lady goes, I don't think you should have her up at all. And the reason mm. why I think you shouldn't. Mm. Your husband is the one you're married to, not this young lady. And if you're able to mm. forgive him, then she yeah. shouldn't be an issue at all. And remember, you're the one who said that you kept calling her and you kept in touch with her. Up to this time, I haven't heard you mention that she's the one calling you yet. Yeah. I told you, I said to you that she kept, she started calling like after January, she started calling. That means right. that's what I told the police. Right, she but, started but, calling. Uh, right, but yeah, this all started, started happening after you befriended her, remember, you know? Yeah, remember. but I told her, remember, you know, remember, I tell her, I say, in a New Year's, and I say, it's done, you know? So you say, I have your abortion, so leave us alone. And then she kept calling afterwards, so that means I tell her how it works. She started tormenting me more, like, you understand? Antagonizing me. Say, oh, me think same, the same one, the baby. And them kind of weird phone call that me I get. Well, you understand? What I, what, just a baby. My advice to you is this. You can hear me, right? Yeah, but unstoppable, please. I want to get some feedback from the people. Can I have at least two people call in? At least. All right, she wants at, at least. least two people for calling. All right. Yeah, All right, viewer, let me hear. Carla, jump onto the stream. Let me open the phone lines for at least two callers. And yeah. you could take Thank a listen. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. All right. So the caller wants at least two feedbacks. I'm going to, even though I'm over time, I'm going to open the phone lines and the phone done ring already. You see, you know, on a lovely mix up, you know. <laughs> You're going to have to listen in, in on the stream, caller. On the show, okay? All right. So remember the rules of this show. No disrespect. Do not disrespect my caller. Share your opinion in a respectful way. When I do answer this call, share your opinion in a respectful way. Do not be disrespectful to my caller in any way. Good night, caller. You're live. Unstoppable. Good night. What's going on, brother? Yeah, my dear man. Um, first of all, I want to say the, the caller, she make a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And depriving her husband, you know, so long from being intimate with her. Right. You get me? And that have a lot to do with the relationship. You get mm -hmm. me? Uh, the, the man is not being intimate with you. He's going to go out there and find someone else. Mm -hmm. You get me? That's where she go wrong. Right. That's the first part she go wrong in the relationship. You get me? Right. And she, she can't blame the, the female because she don't know what really happened right. with the man. She, the man go out there and met a female and do what he have to do because... He's not being intimate with her or nothing. You get me? Right. So that, that's, what, that's what I have to say. You get me? All right. Do you think she should forgive this young lady? Um, everybody do make mistakes. And I, I think she should both give, forgive them. You get me? Right. And just move on with the, with the situation. All right, my brother. Thanks a lot for calling in. All right? Yeah, thank you. And I appreciate the fact that the first person that I answered the phone to is a man. Because the man them very hardly call in, my brother. So thanks again, Zane. Yeah, man. Respect. All right. All right. All right. So this caller say you need to forgive this lady. All right. And you know me like how the man reason. Real talk. Big up yourself, caller. Totally appreciate that. All right. So let's take another call. We're way over time, people. We're way, way, way over time. We're way over time. Good night, Carla. You're live. Let's keep it short. Where are you going? Unstoppable. Gotcha. I have to, I, I, this one, as women, first, the first things first, you don't deprive your husband. Mm -hmm. You definitely, you don't deprive your husband for one week and you definitely don't deprive your husband for nine months. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we send our men out there to cheat because we deprive them, now you don't blame the other women and you don't call and antagonize women. When your man cheats, you have a conversation with him, mm -hmm. not the other women. Mm -hmm. So do you think she should forgive this lady? 
she shouldn't have anything to do with this lady. Forgiveness is not, she, of course she should let the, she shouldn't even have this lady in her heart mm -hmm. because this is between her and her husband. If they, now keep in mind, she said her husband didn't really have any conversation with this lady. Mm -hmm. That's what she made it seem like they just hooked up. So she, she probably didn't, she probably didn't even know he was married. Since she claims he didn't have a conversation, since she claimed it, it seemed like he just fell on her accidentally. Mm -hmm. All right, Carla, thank Come you. Come on, we have to start taking responsibility, giving the responsibility where it's supposed to lie, and that is with the husband. Right. All right, thanks bye -bye. a lot for Good calling night, in. Guys. Have a great night. All right, so Carla... That person said you need to let the responsible the responsibility lie where it's supposed to lie, and that is with your husband. She's saying, don't blame the other woman. So you need to forgive the other woman. So I'm, I hope you're getting the answers that you wanted from the uh, callers tonight, from the viewers tonight. So let's take another call. Let's see Odisa Carleen right now. I'll do a two call. Mr. Mila Tech, you know. Good night, Carla. How are you doing? Hi, Unstoppable. Good night. Good Blessings. night. Good night. Good night, viewers. Yes. Um, I just want to be real brief and say to the caller. Yes. Um, I listened to her and um I empathize with her and, and I understand the way she dealt with the situation. But I get the impression that she's putting all the blame on this other woman. Mm -hmm. She's you know, and what I want to say to her, your husband is not innocent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to realize that he played a part in the old situation, you know, and if she doesn't deal with him, she may have a recurring situation to deal with, maybe not immediately, but at some point in the future. So all I have to say to her, recognize that your, the, your husband must take responsibility as well mm -hmm. for the situation. All right, Carla, thank you so much. You're welcome. Roxanne, you're going to allow me to Roxanne about just here until 11. You see, you know, if you can't make me sit down here until the morning, you know, I want me to sit down until the morning, you know, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> it will not happen. We <laughs> know they are going. Not a thing, not a thing. You know, some people have put up on the TV, so I'm going to me you know. Yeah, yeah, no. Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Um, and some of I wanted to find out which church the lady go call go, so I cannot go to that church. <laughs> Cause there's no way, Miss. You say you is a Chris. I mean, Grace can. Ain't no way supposed to attack so. But anyway, my love. Um, Miss, you yeah, blame the woman, and the woman if you blame her is your man, your husband. And that the smell you have to blame. Furthermore, Missy, I want you to slap with a red flag and say, Miss, that you don't even know. So do anyway, you think that she should forgive the lady, um, Dania? She shouldn't even be begs with the woman. That's her first thing. She shouldn't begs with the woman. But yeah, begs with smile when I have nothing to do with whatever. However, where she get pregnant or not, if you're married, you're supposed to know the boundaries not to cross. Mm -hmm. You lack shop few much months, and I say one day, two day, two week, nothing. Nine months, which man you know I go keep themselves for nine months. But Dania, I will need use said, any palma she, and need five pitney. Daniel, remember she said old. her husband never did anything before they got married in a Daniel. I mean, probably never do nothing. Ah, fishy see, I hear about what him do something. Mm -hmm. All right, Daniel. Big up yourself. By the way, yeah, what happened to you from the other day? We didn't see your show. What happened? You know what I say? Queen Donna bought a house. Congratulations. And Canada man. set it up. Then my daughter got set. So I'm a Canada set some time, you know? All right. But, but you need to update time. your viewers, man. You can't just disappear for your viewers like that and not make them know what I did do that. I did do such things. I okay. put out a broadcast. I okay. did do such things. All right, then. So in that, case, well, in that night. case, in that case, since Queen Dania put out the broadcast and announced why she has not been going, like, only stop message me and ask me why I'm to Dania. I'm not Dania's <laughs> I was spokesman. supposed to come on on Saturday, but, you know, due to the fact that I move, 
the internet man never show up. Mm-hmm. You know everybody that them quarantine and stuff. Yeah, but me thank God him come through. I'm forward to so Wednesday you guys will see me on. All right, Queen Diana. Copies? Blessings. Yeah, man. Little more. Good night, boys. All right. Yes, that that that. Let me see if I've done the show right now. I don't know. I don't really know. I got my belly in a belly now, Carla. Why you keep me on the show tonight, Carla? Tell me. It's not late, Kaki. No one talk. Why you keep me on the show? You know, I'm going to bed. Okay, but let me, let me, let me, let me tell me that Daniel says it's nice. I like how Daniel says it. I'm going to say, what me have to say now? Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it, the it, first time I've the show that me feel so angry, like because the caller, she sounds like that friend that sets up someone to talk about them. That's mm. all I'm getting from what she's doing. You have no business calling nobody if you are a wife. Where is that while ago? You feel she angry, like ish? Like it, yes. I don't know, but just leave it your first time I've watched your show. Wait, I'm just uh, like, oh, like really and truly, I don't want to go to your church. Because she's preaching all this and talking all this and giving a Bible verses, but at the same time, the fruit of the Spirit, one of them is love, and she have no love in her for that lady. She but, have no love. She talk about her so me, bad and laughed about her. It. Okay. Let me ask you a question. If your husband went and got another woman pregnant, or have another woman alleging that she's pregnant for him, would you have love in your heart for that woman? Let me, yeah, you know, me answer the dinner. Do you know why me say answer him and want, sure? I want you to answer that, but in a clean let way. Me, but let, I, I can answer, me can answer truthfully, but then again, that would be on, that would be on me. But because of her story, it's going to be hard for me to answer, come and go say, no, oh, man, we're not talking it is about what it her is. story, I'm asking you. If your husband... Yes, I can. Yes. If your husband goes yes, to another man... Yes. Oh, oh God, hear me. If your husband goes to you. another woman... <laughs> <laughs> and that woman alleges that your husband gets her pregnant, you're trying to say you would have love in your heart for that woman? Of course. After the fact. After the fact, yes. Mm-hmm. I can. Because at the end of the day... I don't, I don't know problem, you know. Sometimes we sit down and go and like say, oh man, go and take him and out of the house and him and not have no talk. And, and, and then we get up and I hear people for something where a man do. And if I can forgive my husband, what am I going to have a few women for? It's so you, simple. So you're, saying that she it's need okay. to, so you're saying that she need to forgive the woman? She not have, she not t- what she have a few women for? She not have no business to about forgive this woman either because at the end of the day, it's on her husband. And guess what? My don't love her husband company for and cause something because all she has say, when she talked about the story, I thought she was there, videoing all that. I didn't know she had talked just because she had talked. She's talking like she was there. Mm-hmm. She not have no business to contact this woman either. And, first. and if you can't talk to your man once, oh, okay, let it be. Let me tell you, as I said before, she's that person who, who turns into doing things. And when you do it, then she start bad about you. The way how she was talking about the study, she not have no business at it. And I laugh about her, how she... It, it, our husband sleep with the whole world, but guess what? Her husband sleep with the community. She sleep with the community too. All right, Carla. Good night. Have a great one. Thanks for calling. All right. Okay. Yeah, man. Bless you. All right. All right. All right. So that's the last call that we're taking for the night. Una na keep me here until eleven o'clock. No. Una na keep me here until eleven o'clock. All right. So before I leave, I want to say if you have an experience that you want to share, and you want to get something off of your chest. The answer for the show is where you call to do that. And the number is 876-420-3368. Send a message via WhatsApp and we will definitely return your call. And all that message needs to say is, Unstoppable, I have a story I want to share. And I will return your call. Or somebody will return your call. All right? Please don't call me. Because my phone already irritate me. Every day. Irritate me. Don't call, just send a message, and I will return the call once I see the message. All right? All it says is, unstoppable, I have a story, and I will return your call. All right? It's that simple. Now, now that I've gotten that out of the way, and by, by the way, when I say the phone irritate me, I mean because it ring like 24-7 every day, right around the clock. It just ring, 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 ring. So as a result, I really tend to not look at the phone throughout the daytime unless I show time. I'm just check it randomly to see if someone sent a message. 
All right? Now, let's get into this. Annette Thompson, Lisa Unstoppable, Sophia James, Michi Boo, Moodman, Tisha Allen, Sevilla Unstoppable, Jacqueline Chang, Janine, uh, Janine, uh, Janine, Cho. You may go stop that. That, that play don't know. Janine, you know yourself. Cho. Big up yourself, everybody who contributed via Super Chat. And also, more want to say big up to the PayPal crew and also the Zell and Cash App crew. Big up on yourself. You don't know the thing already. More want to say Okola Love, Okola Olive. Why me always I call it Okola Love? Okola Olive, much love to you. Thank you so much. All right. Also, more want to say big up to Tash. For bless you up over there on PayPal. Not PayPal, Pan Zell. All right, Tash, big up yourself. All right, also, my officer, big up to Steph Unstoppable. Hey, bless you up on PayPal. You don't know Steph. Much love to you and the gangster. All right, also, my officer, big up to Joanne Reed. Big up yourself. All right, if you're there, big up yourself. All right, and Sophia James. Much love to you as usual. All right, and Grace. Grace Davis. Much love to you as well. And last but not least, we are going to say big up to Petrina Fleury. All right. And Susie Unstoppable, big up yourself also for your Super Chat contribution every single time. All right. Now, the next thing we you know me have to do is definitely big up all of my people them who purchase their merch. All right. As you can see right here, we have Melvilina is the first one who actually received her merch since she ordered it. All right. So she decides that she has to send her Pictures forward to Unstoppable and say Unstoppable seat there, me and rock them. All right, so big up to Melvilina. There are a couple other persons who made their purchase, but they are probably still in transit. So once them get them, they might go shoot me a picture and say Unstoppable seat. Yeah, in my boss. All right, so big up to everybody who made their purchase from the merch store. All right, we have all different kind of things. We have hoodies, we have leggings, we have phone case, we have handbag, we have shirt, we have. Listen to me, we have all kind of things and more things to come as a matter of fact. All right, a whole lot more to come. So, don't worry on yourself, something is going to be there for you. All you have to do is visit the about section of this channel and you will see the merch store link right there. Click the merch store and it takes you exactly to the website where you go to place your order. All right, now, wanna know what time it is now? It is the time when we big up. The Unstoppable Officials, all right? So at this point in time, let me do my shout out for the Unstoppable Officials, the people who are official members of the Unstoppable family, all right? So Unstoppable Officials, if you're here right now and you hear your name, just make sure so you jump out and say me there, all right? All of the Unstoppable Officials, all right? Now guess what? When you see the unstoppable officials are them people that who have up them badge, them good, good badge beside them name. When you don't know them people there, see there? Once when you see them people there, we have them badge beside them name, when you don't know exactly who they are. They are the official unstoppable family members. All right? And me I try to pull up the list, but for some reason it don't want to come up at that. Like YouTube a glitch for me in the day. Yeah? Well, at night. Now you see it? When you see me telling you that I want to sleep, when you think I joke. I'm trying to pull up the list of unstoppable officials, but it don't want to come up. YouTube have glitch. YouTube is glitching. Clara Duval. Big up yourself, Clara Duval. Lady B, unstoppable, Sefigia, big up. I don't know why my officials don't want to come up in a wag one night night. What is happening? My unstoppable officials list don't want to open up. But anyways, all of my people them are having a badge beside on the name right now. Just throw a comment out right now. Let's do it. Let's do it that way. We can't open my unstoppable officials list on my end. So let's go. All of my people them have on a badge up beside on the name. Just throw in a comment so me see you right now. Natalia Grant, big up yourself. Derek C. Williams, much love. Queen Rocks TV, big up yourself. All right. That's, those are the unstoppable officials. G-Style, Tough Style, out and about. See them where so. All right. Lady B, unstoppable. Bless up. Lady B, me just read your message. Tash, unstoppable. Big up yourself. All right. And Kizzy, unstoppable. 
Bless up yourself. Natalia Grant, Queen Rocks, Kami Shades, Araka Arbaji. Yes. All right. I don't know why it now want to open up so that I can shout out all of the unstoppable officials. But I guess I have to go do that on the next show. All right. Now, everybody who have them range beside them name and them name in a blue, big up on yourself. You are the moderators of this show. Totally love you. Know? All right. See, the Jai Black would jump out, rocking our badge. Karen, Queen Unstoppable, rocking our badge. Unstoppable Elizabeth, rocking our badge. Beverly, Henry, rocking our badge. Andre Richards, rocking our badge. And I think Moodman, me see where Moodman became a uh, unstoppable official a while ago too. So big up yourself, Moodman. Ronnie Yearwood, rocking our badge. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Chrissy. Chrissy. Chris, Chris, Chrissy. And where you get that fake badge there from? People who don't say Chrissy are coming with one fake badge, but I see my badge here. Chrissy, where did you get that fake badge? Chrissy is an unstoppable official impersonator. When you see that badge there where Chrissy have fake. <laughs> fake. Anyway, yo, Karen, Queen, unstoppable, big up yourself. All right, so Rosie, unstoppable, bless up, bless up, bless up. So, all of the unstoppable officials who have no badge beside on the name. When you don't comment already, it appears. So, I hit that. All right. So, people, big up on yourself. When you don't know the thing, go until Wednesday night. Today, I'm on the night, right? Uh, today, I'm on the night? I don't even know. But anyway, until Wednesday night. Yes, today, I'm on the Until Wednesday night, everybody, please stay safe. And no matter what, don't make nobody stop on you. All right? <laughs> that, yeah. You and Chrissy with no fake badge. With the third day, yeah? Anyway, big up yourself, peeps. Everybody, you don't know, so we love you. Know. And no matter what, don't nobody stop you. Also, I want to say big up to Karen G. She was the Sunday shout out. All right. She was the Sunday shout out. Karen G, big up yourself. All right. And see it here. Janine. Janine Unstoppable is now the official show boss. So big up yourself, Janine. All right. Much love to you. And people, like I said, please visit the merch store and check out the merch. All right. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, please. Jump over Instagram, it's Unstoppable TV, and follow me over there. All right, people, big up on yourself, and make sure you say, stay safe during this time. All right? See the music. 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 See the music.